Hello fellow aviators, Angelo GB here welcoming you back to the channel which discuss all things aviation. Today we're discussing the impact of COVID-19 on the aviation sector globally. Basically we're looking at a few um, occurrences that have you know happened over the past few months. Um, you know that when COVID started there was a lot of uh, speculation about where the aviation industry was going what might happen to the industry and people in the industry. But we didn't have much to go on at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, but there's there have been so many occurrences that have happened in the past few months that have propelled, you know, every aviator to think about the industry deeply and to analyze what's going on in the industry and to come to a conclusion about, you know, what each one of us thinks might be happening in the industry and where the industry is going after COVID-19. We know that the global demand for pilots was booming before COVID-19. The 2019 Boeing Pilot and Technician Outlook projected that over the next 20 years, the world would require over 800,000 civil aviation pilots. Now, by early 2020, CAE Aviation projected that for the next 10 years alone, there will be a requirement of about 260,000 pilots globally. Needless to say, these figures will have to be revised in light of COVID-19 and the impact that the pandemic has had on not just the aviation industry, but in other feeder industries. For instance, um, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has had uh, a negative impact on uh, the hospitality industry, in uh, travel and tourism, and in the cargo industry as well. You know that many, many countries um, closed their jurisdictions at the start of the uh, pandemic as a way of trying to contain the spread of the virus. Cargo couldn't you know, come in, uh, or if it did come in, it was subjected to long delays except for emergency equipment. Um, other you know, um, uh, cargo, say you, were, you had ordered ceilings from China or a bathtub from China, it had to be you know, um, uh, delayed at the port of entry, it would be held by the government in abeyance until, you know, they had a handle on what was going on. So all that, you know, combined together with the lack of appetite on people, from people to, to, to travel during COVID-19 and after COVID-19, sort of affected those feeder industries that allow aviation to be a thriving industry. And of course, once that happens, once those industries um, affect or negatively affect the aviation industry. The demand for pilots will also go down because airlines will also suffer losses. You know, cargo operators will also suffer losses because the demand for their services would be less and less every day. So today I want us to look at two key impacts of the, or perhaps not, not two key impacts, but two results from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we'll discuss this shortly. We know that pilots were either followed or let go completely. When a pilot is followed, they're basically placed on unpaid leave. They still work for the company, but they are not really going to work. They do not get paid. They're just on unpaid leave. They're being followed. And that can have its own, you know, physical and mental um, consequences or impact on a particular individual who's been placed in that particular position. Other pilots were let go completely. The airline simply shutting down and letting go of those pilots or even if the airline is not shutting down simply deciding to cut costs by dismissing or terminating the contracts of employment of a number of people within the company and those people are suddenly find themselves jobless because of the pandemic so that having happened in a number of airlines globally and also in south africa for instance we saw some airlines closing down um you saw South African Airways, for instance, closing down. We saw South African Express also closing down. While those two may not necessarily be blamed on the um, pandemic per se, but could be blamed on years of mismanagement and lack of governance in that sector. It, it's an example of an airline shutting down because of one reason or the other. I mean, Comair or Kulula had also, also had to find some funders who could bring it back to life after it had you know, been negatively impacted upon by the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So there are two interesting responses to the challenges brought about by, you know, the pandemic. The one is rather gloomy. It's that of suicide, pilots killing themselves. You know, we handle uh, stresses, we handle depression in different ways because we're differently constituted, we're not the same person. There have been reports, you know, um, from across the continent um, 
of, 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 of a pilot ending his life because he was let go. The airline that he was working for um, shut down and he therefore was out of a job also. And he was also suffering, at the same time he was suffering from depression. So you could say he had a comorbidity that led him to take his life. It's a very unfortunate situation. That's one of the developments we've seen in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. So in that case, a 36-year-old um, Indian captain who was flying for Asia lost his job and he jumped from the 12th floor of his apartment to his death. Is that behavior abnormal? Not really. In a post-pandemic world, it's been documented. There is scientific evidence. You know, scholars have written on this. Researchers have disseminated information on this. That post a pandemic of whatever nature, there tends to be a spike in suicides. There are people who are so badly affected by a pandemic that they don't uh, see themselves coping in a post-pandemic world. When the influenza uh, pandemic was here almost 100 years ago, there was a spike in suicides after the pandemic from individuals who couldn't cope with the world post the pandemic. However, that is not to be encouraged by any means. What could be encouraged is for individuals suffering from depression, for individuals who have one state of mental um, health challenge or another to seek professional help in order for them to be able to cope with the world after the pandemic. Because we know that pandemics are traumatic experiences. By nature, they leave you ravaged one way or the other. There is a part of you that a pandemic will touch that will never remain the same. But for you to be able to um, be able to uh, live in a post-pandemic world and survive and continue with life, you need, if you can't really counsel yourself back to normality, you need someone trained in the field, you know, to, to actually help you navigate the post-pandemic world. The second response we've seen um, in a post, not really post-pandemic world, because the pandemic is not gone yet, it's still there. But the other response we've seen from pilots after the onset of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic was what you could call career change. Now, this was much easier for people who had other forms of training apart from aviation training. Say someone who had a degree in accounting. That person could easily shift, you know, after being laid off, they could easily shift and look for a job as an accountant. Someone who was an architect, you know, qualified in architecture or draftsmanship, um, and also a pilot, could then, you know, start working in the architecture field uh, after being let go. Someone who has a law degree could also go and work as a lawyer after being let go as a pilot. But you've seen other changes in career where people were very creative about what they do. Uh, as a response to being laid off as a result of uh, COVID-19. But isn't there's been reports of um, Qantas uh, pilots in Australia turning up as bus drivers in order to make ends meet. That's a career change. That's adapting to the new normal. That's adapting to a post-pandemic world, to do what you can do to keep yourself going until the world normalizes. That's one way of a career change. Others have opted to open up businesses. For instance, the Malaysian Cape Town who has let go of his job and he decided to open a street cafe, go into business, employ himself, open a street cafe, sell noodles, which are in high demand in Malaysia. You know, he aptly named his business Captain Corner, which is the, the captain's corner. You know, he had that visual hammer, you know, he had that um, inclination towards advertising his business in a way that um, draws from who he is and what his aspirations are. And he actually serves his customers wearing his uniform and his four bars, you know. And, and that, that, that's a driver for his, for, for, that's an economic driver for his business. It, it boosts, boosting sales, it's boosting demand for his business. It's a very creative way of, you know, responding to the impact that uh, COVID-19 has had on his life as a captain of an airline. He then went and he opened that street cafe and it's booming. The demand for the curries he serves, the demand for the food he serves, the demand for the noodles he serves is, is, is just increasing every day. He is trying to adapt in a post-pandemic world. So we've seen those two responses. One very, very gloomy response where you simply end everything and you say, I can't take it anymore. 
I'm going to depart, I'm going to leave this world. That's not to be encouraged at all. You'd rather go with the second response where people decide, you know what, um, I'm also trained in this particular field. I'm going to try and find you know, employment in my other field of training, which is why I've always encouraged you know, double qualifications or triple qualifications because I believe as an individual, you can't just be trained in one thing and think that's it, think the world has ended. No, you need to continuously develop yourself, acquire training in other fields, acquire experience in other fields, equip yourself continuously because life, you know, cannot be predicted. There are no guarantees in life. Today we are this, tomorrow we are that. That's what the pandemic has taught us. So it's important for people to continuously develop themselves. It never ends. It ends when you exit. It ends when you leave this world. Keep developing yourself. You never know when you're going to need those extra skills, those extra qualifications. So it's best to develop yourself because you have a fallback position. It's best to do that. You'd rather choose option two than option one. Do not choose the suicide route. Choose, you know, equipping yourself alternatively, equipping yourself differently, using your other skills because the world will come back to normal at some point. The world will go back to normal at some point. And um, you need to begin it. You need to be ready for that world when it normalizes. What can we learn from this pandemic and from pandemics before it or from other catastrophic world events before it? Take 911, for instance, the American bombings that happened in 2001. Aviation suffered and so did other, you know, feeder industries to aviation, your tourism, uh, and, and so forth and so forth. But what the world failed to understand or to glean from that particular example was that there's a need to prepare for the world after the catastrophe. So there, there was a need to create a strong, steady supply of pilots. So in, in other words, there was a failure to understand that catastrophic events like 9-11, like the pandemic, also create opportunities. The feeder industries that are needed for aviation to pick up and go back to what it was will come back to life. Tourism will come back to life. Travel will come back to life. The hospitality industry will come back to life. Logistics will come back to life. People will start shipping cargo. You know, there will be demand for goods and people to be moved across continents. Once that happens, that demand from the aviation service providers will have to be met. And to meet those, you need to recruit. You need to get a new fleet of, of, of aircraft. You need to recruit, you know, aviators, trained aviators who can operate that fleet of aircraft. When that happens, make sure that you are ready. Make sure that you're not taking the strain and impact of COVID right now and you're negatively, you know, retreating into your cocoon and not doing anything about your life. Continually develop yourself. Continually push forward. Because when the industry opens, you need to be ready. Whenever it opens, you need to be ready. There are opportunities in pandemics. There are opportunities in, in world catastrophes. So make sure you can maximize on those opportunities. What opportunities am I talking about? It is said that time and tide waits for no man. It also waits for no woman as well. So senior captains, qualified captains, some of them will be reaching their time and age while the industry is in this state of flux. By the time it opens, there will be that gap. Some captains who are not necessarily perhaps approaching um, uh, retirement may decide, I've had it. It's not stable. I'm leaving this thing. That will leave a gap. Some young qualified pilots who had years between them and retirement may also decide, I've tried business and I'm happy with it. I'm not going back to the cockpit. I'm going to stick with my business. That too will leave a gap. When that gap is there, will you be ready and qualified to enter the cockpit? I hope that was inspirational, motivational and eye-opening. If it was, please do click the like button below. And please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe on the channel. It will help us grow. It will help us reach out to other African children on the continent and beyond. Because we're not just focusing on Africa. Yes, Africa is our primary focus, but we want to reach out to every dreamer out there who has until now thought that aviation was impossible for them. We want to say to them, it's possible. You can do it. You want, we want you to have that can-do attitude. We want you to have that I can do it attitude. And you jump on it and do it. 
So your subscription helps us to grow the channel. Your like on the video helps us to grow the channel. We appreciate that. We've seen some growth in the previous weeks and we appreciate all those guys that did that, that clicked on the like button and the guys that engage with us in the comments and on social media because we've left our social media handles in the description below. Follow us on social media, inbox us on social media um, and we're working on getting a WhatsApp number that will include in the description below where we can also, you know, get in touch and, and, and discuss uh, all issues of aviation. And remember that with every hour the cockpit beckons. And whatever hour you're expending your energy on, the cockpit beckons. It throws you closer and closer and closer to your goal. Until next time, Angel Rejibe here, signing out and saying cheers.